boss because I kept telling my team, I need to learn how to produce. I need to learn how to edit. But I would never get behind the thing and do it. But I would watch them. And then one time, Ernie and Katie and nobody showed up. I said, God damn it. You know, do this. So I had my guests there and I'm over here trying to do what it is that I need to do. I probably couldn't even reach Susan at that time, but I'm determined that I'm going to close my eyes and do what they told me to do. And it was so funny because um, Ernie comes walking in 15 or 20 minutes after the thing, and I just kind of said, oh, now you want to show up. And I left all that in the show, too. I left that in the show because I wanted him to know. But um, when COVID hit, we had to learn how to use the system or use Audacity or a different way of doing things. So one of the things I want to make sure that I remember to do, I'm still trying to learn how to get out background noise. So if anybody deals with Audacity and knows how to get out background noise, if you could help me, I would appreciate that. Okay. And then if anybody, I just uploaded to a newer version. I'm trying to get bowed and come out of my comfort zone and do video. Like so. Yeah. so but I need somebody to help me to cross over into that path. Like Susan says, you know, I'm tackling it, I'm trying to make it come outside of my comfort Faith Thomas Foundation, let me get this out the way, community events. It was hard to get into community events when I, we first started because not very many people want to deal with an organization that raises awareness about sickle cell because it impacts 90% of African Americans. And they would not let... I mean, I just couldn't get in. And I'm like, God, if you put me on this path, how am I supposed to get into this? You know, how am I going to get people to let me in? And at that time, it was sickle cell patients suffer from leukemia, sickle cell patients suffer from cancer, sickle cell patients suffer from diabetes. So then that's how I started approaching it, because that's what he told me to say. And then I started getting involved um, into the, you know, into that. But I knew that we made it when the city of Columbus would send people to me to ask me about sickle cell. So the same way Susan said, hey, you know, this, the city of Columbus called me up and said, do you mind if we give out your information in regarding sharing someone who wants to start an organization on sickle cell? Then he started nudging me to host my own fairs. And so now we are on like our fifth fair, outdoor fair, I'm hoping, this year I'm holding one at Lowe's on May 11th, WGRN is going to be participating, so I'm asking you all to come out. It's going to be at Lowe's Whitehall, so I'll do a promo or send a flyer or something to Susan. Then we have another one on June uh, 15th, which is going to take place out of Mill Run, which is going to be in front of a Versity Blood Center to try to help promote people to donate blood since OSU, uh, they are... I want to say about 95% of the sole blood provider to OSU Medical. And then we have a bowling event, which is, I think Susan and Bob came to last yeah, year's yeah, event. And they, they have fun, you know. <laughs> it's all about having fun. And I try not to keep, uh, keep the rates low so that everybody can afford to, you know, have a good time. And we do, if you get a team together, we do provide pizza and soda. So you get some of your money back, you know. And you get to play two games. Um, then we have our big fundraiser for Orshu Medical and Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, I am on the board, advisory council for the sickle cell programs at OSU, and those are the two hospitals that we help in regards to our fundraising to help them with their sickle cell programs. I can't think of anything else. I did bring my sheet up. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Susan. I know Victoria's not here. But she also kind of kept us in line. And where's Tim? Because he would send these emails. Okay, Tim would send emails too to us like when we were uh, not doing something quite right. So it was to <laughs> shape us into what we are right now. And I'm trying to figure out how do I go about or how did I even get started taking a half hour show or a 40 minute show. It takes me almost three hours, four hours to edit that show. And I'm like, it shouldn't be this hard. But I'm listening for every sound, listening for every word to make the guests that I am interviewing, and especially when they go get the show, that they are just as proud to share it 
with someone else. So I want to thank WGRN for allowing me this privilege because if Susan would have never had said it, um, I would never be involved in this. And when she told me how long I was involved in it, it says, my, how time this flies and you're having fun. So <laughs> I thank each and every last one of you for what it is that you've done. And I hope to see some of you at um, some of our fairs or things like that. And don't be surprised if I call you up and say, hey, would you mind coming on my show? Because once again, it's something about uh, programming and services that I want to share with the community as a whole. So thank you. I was blown away with